Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog and it's the late winter garden tips and tour. We've had a sudden bout of snow, so suddenly all the things I was going to do I've had to put off and actually I was a bit late with many of them anyway. So one of the things we're going to look at is do you have to do things in the garden exactly when the gardening jobs list say you should or can you actually be quite late with things and is it better to do something late than not to do it at all? I'll put links in the description below to any resources I mention or to any people and if you're new here the Middle Size Garden uploads once a week and if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube click the subscribe button it's absolutely free and if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded then click the notifications bell. The Middle Size Garden is a walled town garden in South East England. It's about 100 feet long and about 80 feet wide at its widest. It's an L shape and 40 feet wide nearer the house. And we do have quite mild winters. We tend to equate to a USDA hardiness zone of nine, which means it's rare for our winters to go below minus six Celsius. But we have had a very sudden bout of snow and we've had two of the coldest nights in the last decade. So, of course, what does a sudden change like that mean to the garden? And if I was planning to do certain things, can I still do them? Will it be all right to leave it until later? I find gardening to-do lists very useful and it'll say this is what to do in January and this is what to do in February. But quite often I will get to March and discover I haven't done what I was meant to do in December. So is it too late? For example, we have two lovely crab apple trees just on either side of our front gate. And the time to prune fruit trees is early winter, which is November or December for us in the UK. We're now in the middle of February. Can I still prune my crab apple tree? Particularly as we've got this sudden bout of snow. So I asked some friends of mine who are local fruit farmers. Their climate is the same and their weather is the same as mine. And they have to prune thousands of apple trees all throughout the winter and they have to get good yields from them. So I felt this was a very good place to go for advice and they said that they prune their apple trees throughout the winter. They're still pruning in February and they also continue to prune in the snow. So although I don't particularly want to go out and prune this crab apple tree now, I could. The next thing to look at is shrubs, pruning of shrubs. Now there's one really good rule for pruning shrubs and you won't go far wrong if you follow it and that is that most shrubs need to be pruned after they've flowered. So a shrub that flowers in winter like this viburnum dawn needs to be pruned about now because the flowers are over. It won't hurt if I leave it for a couple of weeks or indeed a month. What does cause problems is if you think, oh, I've missed the window to prune this shrub, I'll have to wait until next year, because of course then you've got two years growth, and in fact I've sometimes found even three years growth, and the shrub gets really congested and overgrown. So it's better to take a bit of a risk and prune it late than not to prune it at all. The exception to pruning immediately after flowering is and hydrangeas. Hydrangeas have flowers that often look wonderful in the winter and their flowers often protect the buds just below them for next year's flowers. So I'd hold back on pruning hydrangeas immediately after they flower. I recently had a query as to whether it's too late to trim your lavender. Well, actually, it's not a good idea to trim your lavender in late winter. But I asked Simon Charlesworth, who runs Down Dairy Lavender, a lavender grower near me who has the National Collection of Lavenders, what the best thing to do about pruning lavenders is. The best time to prune lavenders, he says, is when we prune ours, which is immediately after the flowers have faded. Our lavender flowers around July or midsummer, and so we prune it back in late summer or early autumn. I've actually left it as late as September in the past. But although we've pruned our big main lavenders in the centre of the garden, there is actually a little scrappy lavender plant in the border here, which I completely forgot about. So when is the best time to prune it? Simon says if you miss that late summer, early autumn window, then the best time to do it is about mid-spring when the sap is beginning to rise. And for us here in South East England, that will be probably late March or early April. So when is it too late to plant bulbs? Well, if you're looking at the to-do lists, you'll be advised to plant your daffodils in September or October, and that's autumn, and tulips in late autumn, early winter, which is November and December. But I have often found myself planting tulips in January, which is really late winter. There's a beautiful garden not far from me in Essex called Altingwick, and it's famous for its tulip displays. 
and the owner and the head gardener put in about 1,400 tulips in January. So that is in late winter. And they said to me, as long as they're all in by the end of January, that's fine by us. Tulips are best, they said, planted after the ground has frosted at least once, so they should be put in quite late. And if you're planting plot bulbs late, the head gardener of Altingwick says make sure you plant them the right way up so they're not going to waste energy sort of trying to turn themselves the right way up. In terms of daffodils, I did try one year to plant daffodils quite late. So that was in January, so a good three months after I was supposed to have planted them. And actually, quite a few came up, not as many as would have done if I planted them the right time, but they did come up. And witch gardening, who do much sort of better and more consistent trials than I do, uh, did also planted a daffodils in January trial. And witch said that their daffodils planted in January often did come up, but they tended to be shorter and the flowers lasted less long. Round about now, it is too late to plant bulbs because we're into late winter, early spring. But really, up until about the end of January, it's fine to plant bulbs, just possibly you may not get quite such a good result if they're daffodils. So when is it too late to mow the lawn? Well, the thing is about mowing the lawn is that you don't have to read a gardening to-do list to find out when to mow your lawn. You just need to look out the window. If your winter days are regularly above five Celsius or 40 Fahrenheit, then your grass will go on growing and so it needs to go on mowing. Mow with slightly higher blades and don't mow if it's very wet because the wheels of the mower may churn up the grass and cause bald patches. But if you have mild winters, which we usually do, then actually there isn't a time when you put the mower away. However, when you see in gardening to-do lists, put the mower away, then just remember that that's a good reminder to have it serviced. And if you're going to go on mowing all year round, one might just forget to get one's mower serviced. So definitely make a note of that. So what's good in the garden at the moment? Well, it has to be snowdrops. And I listened to an online talk with the online gardening club, Adventures in Horticulture, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And the speaker was Naomi Slade, who's written a book on snowdrops. And Naomi said that now, which is late winter, early spring, is a very good time to plant snowdrops. You plant snowdrops when they've still got their green leaves on. It's called In the Green. And she suggests that you create little tableaus in the garden. And actually, I'm rather pleased with this little tableau, which is snowdrops with cyclamen. And then you can see the brightly coloured stems of cornus, which will have leaves on later on in the year. And then in the background, there's this silver birch. Plant snowdrops under deciduous trees and shrubs because there'll be something to look at when the leaves are off the trees and shrubs. And then when the leaves are back on the trees and shrubs, there's not much else that will grow there. And both snowdrops and cyclamen disappear underground in the summer. Cyclamen I find very useful in this late winter garden. And there are lots of different kinds of cyclamen and you will find a cyclamen that's hardy up until about minus 10 Celsius, 21 Fahrenheit. If you get given a cyclamen in a pot for indoor, it's probably more of a house plant. It could be called florist cyclamen and it's much less likely to do okay outside. But you might as well give it a go, plant it outside when it's over, see if it survives. A few of mine have. As I'm always saying, gardeners learn by trial and error. And they are a really useful plant at this time of year because they cover the bare earth with these very pretty leaves. Gardening jobs to do are not really a straitjacket. There's lots of different factors. So I think you can really leave it a month or even two sometimes after you should have done something to do something. And you will learn what's right for your climate. Because of course, my early winter is not the same as your early winter. You might be much further north, you might be living at the top of a hill, or you might be in a frost pocket. So you get to know your own garden and when you can do things. And I'd love to know if you've had any good or bad experiences with doing things much later than you ought to have done. So do leave that in the comments below. And at the end of this video, there's a playlist of practical gardening tips, which I hope you'll find helpful. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.